journey by that game company lives on as one of the most beautiful gaming experiences ever created. Winner of so many awards and nominated for many others, including a Grammy, which was the first in history for a video game soundtrack, Something About Journey broke through the countless obstacles games face that keep them from being taken seriously. Scientists and artists continue to be respectfully curious about the effects of playing Journey on the mind and the soul. But what made this two-hour game so moving? Looking at it on paper, it doesn't make sense. It's a short walking simulator with a linear narrative, without weapons or distinct characters or even clear objectives. Your avatar doesn't even have a voice, and in fact the whole game is entirely languageless. Yet wielding so little, why does this game feel so big? As a screen therapy review, I'll be focusing on the emotional and psychological aspects of this game, explaining why it makes such an impact on players and how playing Journey every so often can actually help improve our sense of well-being, suggesting that maybe by taking games like Journey seriously, we can learn more ways to use interactive media to practice new emotional skills or heal parts of our psyche. Journey has a profound effect on its players. The mood management levels reflect a highly absorbing experience, drawing us in. It's a quiet meditative game with a soundtrack that lulls you into a contemplative trance and sound design that pulls you further into the environment with every sandy footstep. Both seasoned and new gamers alike have shared how Journey moved them. Often players will even cry, or come close to crying, even though they don't report feeling sad. Instead, players found themselves overwhelmed by an unexpected emotion. Awe. If you've ever walked into an ancient cathedral, stargazed somewhere with clear skies, been out at sea during a sunset, or even come across a beautiful piece of art, chances are you've experienced awe. Awe is the sudden shrinking of the self, the giving way from thinking only about ourselves to tuning in to an overwhelming appreciation of a world infinitely larger, older, and more mysterious than ourselves. This was the exact feeling the developers wanted to inspire in players. We don't get to feel awe often in our day-to-day -day lives, but exploring the timeless dunes of Journey as our little robed avatars surrounded by ancient ruins and low rumblings of the sand and wind around us, listening to long stretches of cello harmonies, we begin to feel small, young, humble, and curious about everything. This feeling of awe is actually incredibly useful. It removes the magnifying glass we put over our problems and our egos calming us down, slowing our minds, and making us feel insignificant in a good way. Suddenly, what was worrying us before loading up the game doesn't bother us that much anymore. Media psychologists have found that awe actually inspires a lot of benefits. Feeling awe reduces stress and anxiety, leading to a sudden rush of well-being and positive mood. It may even benefit our health in both the short and long term. Feelings of wonder inspire us to think more critically and work harder to learn, one of the reasons we're so enthralled by the mysterious landscapes of the game. Most importantly, when struck with awe, we lose sight of our tight sense of selfhood. Our sense of identity opens up and we experience self-transcendence, feeling more connected to others and the world around us. With this perspective, studies show that people who recently experienced awe are more generous and more kind, cooperating with others and strangers more closely, and behaving in an overall more pro-social way. This brings us to one of the most moving experiences a player can have in Journey. About a third into the game, you might be hopping around the desert when you spot a figure in the distance. If you were like me, you first assume that the other robed character was an NPC, but as it twirls around you, you think, maybe it's an AI reacting to my movement and then it sings to you in a rhythm that's distinctly human, a playfully frantic melody of, are you real? And suddenly you realize you found somebody to play with. They don't have a username or a mic or any discernible characteristics other than their random glyphs, but realizing you're sharing this awesome experience with a nameless, harmless stranger feels amazing. You feel compelled to run around together solving puzzles. Even for shy players like myself, who don't usually play multiplayer, the experience is still, if not even more moving, to finally have an environment that encourages teamwork with an anonymous, curious, and equally awestruck companion is a dream come true for the shy gamer. Many players reported sticking to their companions like glue, chirping to each other in inventive and playful ways to coordinate teamwork or to just say hello every few minutes. By the end of their journeys, players felt strongly linked and appreciative of their silent friends, moved by the experiences they had together. And losing a companion halfway through the game can even inspire feelings of actual loss. 
The developers of Journey captured something important when they created this online feature. They purposely wanted to create a situation in which players could see the good of humanity in others, without competition or identifiable features that can spark bias or stereotypes between players. The awe-inspiring environment of the game not only helps us feel connected to others and humanity in general, but inspires us to be kind, generous, and even loving. In fact, the objectives of Journey were written to be somewhat easy so that players could focus on spending time together rather than ignoring each other for more exciting tasks. Getting practice with this sense of connection, kindness, and tenderness is very useful. We come out of playing Journey feeling more appreciative and mindful of our interactions with others. If we hold on to this feeling, it can greatly benefit our relationships in real life too. If we can exercise the patience and kindness that we exercise towards our companions in Journey, towards everyday strangers that we come across, or even loved ones that we feel a little icy towards, we can actually find ourselves improving our relationships by treating them the way we would if we were in an awesome environment. In conclusion, Journey offers us crucial practice feeling the fleeting and hard to recreate experiences of wonder and awe. The developers of that game company truly maximize the benefits of awe in its related feelings of connection to humanity. Playing Journey has been likened to a spiritual experience, which makes sense. Just like a spiritual experience, this interactive environment focuses our attention on a world larger than ourselves, draws our attention to beauty and nature, and promotes goodwill and love towards others. The benefits of playing Journey would be decreased stress and anxiety, greater appreciation of nature and the environment, lower levels of egotism and materialism, and a higher sense of kindness and patience with others. To bring these benefits into the long term with us, we might include Journey in a curriculum of games useful for socio-emotional learning, or we can create a personalized regimen of media experiences to partake in once in a while to help moderate our fluctuating moods in life. We might file Journey under the category of experiences we would need to revisit if we've been feeling our problems getting too big for us, if we're worried that maybe we've become a little too self-important or narrow-minded, if we're struggling with feelings of isolation or unnecessarily magnified despair, or if we need to treat any antisocial thoughts that might come creeping up on us when we get stressed by personal relationships or disheartening stories in the news. If you are dealing with any of those struggles, I cannot recommend Journey with more enthusiasm to be given a spot in your personal library of meaningful media experiences. It is a uniquely beautiful, inspiring, and eudaimonic experience that helps us transcend our typical selves and catch a glimpse of something divine both within ourselves and others. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more content about games, media psychology, and maybe some content in the future about movies as well, please subscribe and leave a comment about any games or movies that you'd like to see covered. And as always, happy playing.